Greetings, everybody. Nick here. Welcome back to Groovy Thursdays. I'm really excited about the grooves this week. We're going to take a little, little step back from the rock and roll and the prog rock, and we're going to get back into some R&B, funk, and soul music drumming that is just fantastic. The band is Earth, Wind & Fire, and the drummer is Fred White. Any of you out there who know me at all, follow my career, know, and I've said this before, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but I love funk, soul music, R&B music. I love the rhythm aspect of that music. It's so exciting, and it's added a ton to my playing over the years. It's really added a lot to my musicianship, and I recommend this style of music to any player. I don't care how, you might be the most ardent metal guy on earth, you know, but if you take the time to learn and to just soak in some of this kind of music, the style of this kind of drumming, it will add so much flavor to your drumming, no matter what style of music you play. I truly believe that. Fred White was a fantastic drummer. Now, I say was because Fred White passed just this year on January 1st. It's sad to hear that he went. He had a long career, played on a lot of records with a lot of artists, but he was in Earth, Wind & Fire for quite a long time. Now, he's the brother of Verdine White, who's the bass player. What a rhythm section those two made. And he, I think he was the half-brother of Maurice, one of the original singers in Earth, Wind & Fire. What a band. So many great songs. You know, back in the 70s and early 80s, Earth, Wind & Fire was one of the biggest bands on the planet by far. They had tons of hits, all kinds of songs that all of us know. Even the young kids of today know those songs because they're always on the radio still to this day. Those songs have really stood the test of time. They play them at parties. They play them at sporting events. They play them all kinds of places. So those songs have been around with us for a long time, and I'm so happy they have because they're great. They're just great. You can't help but listen to a song like Shining Star or September or Let's Groove and just not bounce your head. I mean, it's just, it's just, it just naturally happens. I'm calling these grooves six prodigious, I love that word, six prodigious Fred White grooves. So many hits. He played on all of the big hits back in the day. And I think I picked six great ones here. If you don't really know that much Earth, Wind & Fire music, just grab one of the greatest hits records because you'll have at least an hour's worth of music of song after song after song that is just going to make you want to bop your head and dance. The first groove I want to talk about is Getaway, a classic old song. It starts out with this great rhythmic feature between the horns and the vocals and the drums. The way I have the groove written on the transcription is just from the main body. Once the whole band kicks in after that initial intro, that's what I have here. All of the songs are in 4-4 time. Almost all the grooves have the snare on 2 and 4, your typical backbeat. It's what's going on in the hi-hat and your kick drum that really changes up the grooves and gives them different flavor. This particular groove has two and four on the snare drum, so a nice, solid backbeat. The hi-hat is playing basically 16th notes back and forth between your hands. The difference in this groove is it's basically a two-bar phrase, so that second bar is a little bit of change there, and we'll go through that in just a second. And there's the kick drum pattern. So let's start there. The kick drum pattern in the first bar, beat one, the down beat. Then you have a double, starting on the last 16th note of beat two into beat three. So a nice 16th note double. da do da do Try and get nice and precise with your foot. But boom, so you hear both of those hits at the same volume. Don't really want one lower, like the first one lower volume and the second one louder volume. Try and make them so they're both relatively the same volume. Then the last kick drum that happens on the last 16th note of beat four, you don't play the downbeat. You don't play the downbeat of beat one of the second bar. So that anticipation, that kick drum just stops on the four and uh, and it's a great way to bring in the second bar. I just love that, that there's no downbeat after it. It's really cool. Then what happens in this second bar is you're basically playing along with the rhythmic pattern that the horns and the rest of the band are playing. So it goes, ba ka ba ka ba 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 You can hear it in the vocals, too. da 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 get away. Leave today. That's the rhythm you're playing here. So you're going to start on beat number two with four sixteenth notes, four yenda, just right on the snare drum. That leads us into that rhythmic pattern right on the downbeat of three, then the last 16th note of beat three, and then the and of four. The rhythm is like this if you clap it out. One, two, three, and a four, and one, two, three, and a four, and one, two, three, and a four, and one, two, three, and a four, and. You do that back and forth a few times, then you have a rhythmic pattern at the end leading into the first verse. That rhythmic pattern is played all on the snare drum. Everybody in the band is doing this same pattern. There's three chunks of four 16th notes. The first chunk starts right on beat one, so you play one E and a. The second chunk of four sixteenth notes starts on the and of two, 
So you play two E and a, and three and. Then the last chunk of four sixteenth notes starts on B4, four E and a. Lots of cool rhythms going on here. Really tight with the band. I encourage you with this groove and with all the grooves in these six prodigious Fred White grooves here. I encourage you to play along to the song. Put on your headphones, your in-ears, however you play along to music. You'll really start to feel these grooves and the life inside the music. So when you get to hear that horn section going and you can hear the vocals and play along to it, it really adds a lot to these simple grooves. Now, if we're talking simple, it doesn't get much simpler than the second groove in the six prodigious Fred White grooves here, Boogie Wonderland. This is a straight ahead sort of disco beat, but what's hard about it is the preciseness and then the pocket. You want precise and pocket in the same groove, and it really goes a long way to a great feel. So you have one and three on the kick drum, two and four on the snare drums, and eighth notes on the hi-hat. That's, that's it, that's as simple as it gets. But what you're trying to do here, at least what I hear Fred doing in this song, that he's being very precise on the hi-hat, not washing the hi-hat, having it really tight, and then there's no flamming at all between your foot and your hi-hat and your snare and your hi-hat. Everything is nice and tight. And if you can also, when you're playing this groove, a thing that will really enhance the practice of this kind of thing is to move your body around too. When you're playing this thing, kind of go back and forth. Get into the whole zen of the pocket of a simple groove like this. Your body will approve for sure. You'll love it. You'll start internalizing these feels. And you take that kind of feel and that movement and looseness in your body movement of a simple groove and add that to playing a hard groove, your body moving and getting into it that way. I'm telling you, these things will help your playing overall. Next is the classic song, Let's Groove from the Rays record. Now, when this record first came out, I was in middle school. I was probably in eighth grade. It was right around 1981, I think, when this record was released. This record was huge for me because prior to that, you know, I was heavily into Genesis and Yes and Rush and all of the proggy stuff, Zeppelin, those kinds of things. Of course, the love for that music has never waned, ever. But at this particular period in my life, I was really expanding my musical tastes and what I like to hear and enjoy. And I went to all kinds of places from this point in my life and onward. When this record came out, it touched me big time because this particular song, Let's Groove, is on the radio constantly, of course, but the rest of the record is great. There's all kinds of great rhythmic features and cool songs and great melodies and lots to learn from. The song starts out with this simple little hi-hat pattern and the kick drum starting on one and then on two and and on three. Boom, 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 boom. Really simple there, right? But what I want to point out is when the groove actually kicks in, there's a tiny little nuanced thing in here that I think is very cool. Eighth notes in the hi-hat, two and four on the snare. Simple there. The kick drum pattern. This is what I'm talking about, this little nuanced thing. You have the downbeat of beat one, then you have the two and and three, just like you do in the intro. Then you have the kick drum on beat four with the snare drum. To me, that's really cool. You don't have the kick drum on beat two, only on beat four. So the kick drum pattern, if you clap it out, is like this. One, two, three, four, boom. Boom, 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 boom. One, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, one. It's a little thing. I know it's a little thing, but it's really cool, and it adds just a little bit of flavor to a fantastic groove. The next groove we're going to get into here is one of my favorites from the song Fantasy. It's a little bit different than the others, and I'm taking the chunk that basically starts out the song. There's a great little funky guitar line going, and the groove here is 16th notes in your hi-hat with just your right hand, nice and tight. There's some accents going on. You're not just playing them all staccato. You're kind of going up and down in as far as accents are concerned in your hi-hat, but it's a nice and tight sound. Side stick in your snare hand, okay? There's one on beat two, one on beat three, and one on beat four, and then the next one is on the last 16th note of beat four. That's a big accent right there. So you have one, two, three, four, and uh, two, three, four, and uh, two, three, four, and uh which is really cool. Add to that what's going on in your kick drum. So in the kick drum, you're playing the first and last 16th note of every beat. So it's all doubles. So like this. One, two, three, four. Boom, ba-boom, 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 ba-boom. One and a two and a three and a four and a one, that kind of thing. But you add that to the side stick, 
that accent on the end of beat four, the last 16th note of beat four, and the tight hi-hats, it's a great practice tool for just coordinating your body and making sure everything is working in sync. It's fantastic. Check it out. The second and the last groove in our six prodigious Fred White grooves is from the classic song Shining Star. This is a pretty simple drum groove, but it's all about the feel and the attitude. It's also slightly swung. It kind of, to me, in my ear, it kind of goes in and out of swung and straight, and it's just about attitude, really. Two and four on the snare drum. Your kick drum pattern is pretty simple. Downbeat of beat one, and then again, one of those kind of typical doubles that Fred seems to do a lot. The last 16th note of beat two, and then downbeat of beat three. So, ba-boom, that kind of thing. The hi-hat pattern is basically eighth notes, but it's sort of morphing and moving around. Sometimes I hear I'm going to go to the snare drum a little bit. There's some ghost notes happening. I wrote out the transcription pretty simply. It's just about locking in with the bass guitar, having that pocket be really deep, and then just grooving along and dancing along with this drum beat. And last but not least is one of the great Beatles covers I think there ever has been. You know, it's really tough to cover a Beatles song. Lots of people have tried, and some are great, some are not so great. This is one of the great ones. Got to Get You Into My Life. This was a single that was released, I think, in 1978, give or take some time there. And it's just a great take on that classic Beatles tune. Now, really, the drum groove is just a shuffle beat, but the way Fred White was playing it was very precise. There's not a lot of loosey-goosiness in this particular shuffle beat. You're doing the typical shuffle hi-hat pattern. Da, 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 right? The first note of the triplet and the last note of the triplet, and then you just tie them all together. Snare drum on two and four, typical backbeat. And it's the kick drum pattern that makes this groove. Right on the downbeat of beat one, then on the last note of the triplet of beat two, so it's that kind of anticipation note, then you play the last triplet note of beat four, then the downbeat of beat one of the next bar. So there's a double there. So let's clap it out real quick. One, two, three, four. Boom, 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 boom. It's really simple, of course, but try to play along with the record and feel the rest of the music around this groove, and you'll see how it locks in with the bass guitar and the vocals and that horn section, and it really is magical. And there you go, my friends, six prodigious Fred White grooves. Fred was a great drummer, so much to learn from, classic songs, turn on some Earth, Wind & Fire, get behind your drum kit, and have a great time. If you like what's going on here at Groovy Thursdays, I ask that you like this video, share it with all your friends, subscribe to the channel, bring on comments and suggestions for future grooves. We'll see you on next week, everybody. Take care and cheers.